suppose that it's the case that in a year, a multimodal model can solve ARC, let's say get 80%, sure. whatever the average human would get, then AGI? Quite possibly, yes. Hey everyone, so ARC AGI has been hyped over the last week as the benchmark that LLMs cannot solve. Now, in this video, I'll break down what ARC is, what the hype is about, how you can start solving this challenge, and we'll also cover a promising solution approach. So what is this challenge? What is ARC? ARC is abstraction and reasoning corpus. Now, ARC for AGI or ARC-AGI, this is the benchmark which actually measures the ability of skill acquisition of a particular algorithm or model. Now, ARC prize is a $1.1 million public competition to beat and open source the solution to the ARC AGI benchmark dataset, which is hosted by Francois Cholet, who is the creator of Keras and is also a staff software engineer at Google, and Mike Nu, who is the co-founder of Zapier. Before we go any further in this video, it's very important for all of us to first understand what AGI is. So we'll all converge on one definition of AGI because that is the basis of this entire challenge. So most people think that AGI is a system that can automate, you know, a large chunk of economically valuable work. But that isn't the right way to look at it because it is primarily focusing on replacing humans from the system. The correct definition is AGI is a system that can efficiently acquire new skills and solve open-ended problems. Now, this definition focuses on augmenting human intelligence to further invent and discover alongside humans with minimal input from us. So what's so different about this benchmark dataset? Up until now, we know that LLMs have been trained on unimaginably vast amounts of data, and yet they have been unable to solve or adapt to new problems that were not part of their training data set. So they fail at learning new skills or solving open-ended problems. Now that's why Francois says that EGI progress has stalled and we need new ideas. And if you need new ideas, you should first define what the problem is all about. And that's where we go back to the correct definition of EGI, focusing on the skill to learn new skills and solve open-ended problems without any explicit instruction. So comes a new benchmark dataset, which is designed to measure the ability of an AI system to learn new skills and solve tasks without any explicit instruction. Now, most of the AI benchmarks today measure skill, but skill alone is not intelligence. The ability to learn a new skill is what is called intelligence. And that's what humans are good at with our general ability. So most of the AI benchmarks, if you look at it, for example, Hella Swag, now they evaluate LLMs on common sense, natural language inference. If you talk about MMLU, okay, measuring massive multitask language understanding, they test LLMs understanding across diverse subjects. Human eval, they assess LLMs ability to write functional code based on the instructions. But general intelligence is the ability to efficiently acquire new skills. And ARC AGI is the only unique formal benchmark for AGI that tests for general intelligence by assessing not just the skill, but also skill acquisition. So ARC AGI is a visual reasoning benchmark dataset that requires us to learn the pattern and then solve the test puzzle. And they provided a playground page in order to understand what these tasks are like. The complete dataset consists of unique training and evaluation tasks. And if you look at the playground page over here, each task consists of these sort of input output pairs, which are basically puzzles. And I need to learn from these examples and then fill my test output grid. And within the output grid, I also need to pick the right dimension of the output grid. So let's solve this in order to understand what this puzzle is all about. From the examples, I need to learn the pattern. So if you look at this input over here, and this is my six by six output, 
The pattern is that this two by two grid is placed over here and we continue to place these grids. And if you see the last column over here continues in the next row. Okay, let's see if in second example, this holds up. I place the complete grid, okay, in my six by six output grid. And then this over here, this column in my two by two grid continues in my second row as well. So first of all, over here, if you want, you can select it from the input. Okay, copy from input, you can do that also that from this input, I need all of this over here. And you can resize this grid. So I need to pick the right output grid. So right now my output grid should be six by six. So I'll resize this over here, I'll continue to fill my output grid based on this. Let's complete all the greens first. Then we'll complete all the orange. And finally, I will pick my blue. And then the last one is the red, all the remaining ones are red. So this is going to be my output based on the pattern that I have learned. Now in order to check whether I've done it right or not, I will submit my solution over here. And here you go. Correct. Try the next puzzle. So this is how my data set is structured. It is filled with such puzzles. Now the complete source of truth data set is present on this repository, GitHub repository, Arc AGI from Francois Chalet. And here you can learn about the complete structure of the data. Now you will have to download, clone this repository in order to play around with it and you know continue working on top of this. The data directory consists of two subdirectories. Okay, training, which contains task file for training 400 tasks. And similarly, evaluation dataset also contains 400 such tasks, where each task contains, you know, three to five examples, where each example is input output pairs. And similarly, you will have one, typically one uh, test output that you'll have to create. So if you go with this data folder, you have evaluation and training. And in these evaluation, all of these puzzles have been provided to you in a JSON format. So if you see the train, I have input, I have then output as a list over here. Okay, now matrix is nothing but list of lists. And that's what we have over here. Output looks something like this. And similarly, I have this train and test directly over here. This is one single task. If you count all these, these are 400 tasks in my evaluation data set. Similarly, in the training data set also, you have such 400 tasks. Now to start solving this challenge, first of all, I would like to clone this repository. Okay, copy the URL, okay, and write get clone and add a dot here. So I've created a, a dedicated folder. And if I see, I have all these files over here. Now I'll open this folder, arc AGI. So when you clone this, you have the data folder where you have training data set and evaluation data set. If you open it, all the files are going to be over here. You can format this document and you can then go through the training input output as well as test out input and output uh, puzzles. Okay, all of these have been structured in a JSON format and provided to you. If you see, you also have this apps folder and in this apps, I have this testing interface dot HTML. Now I can test the interface on my local system as well, which will help me build my solution and test it here itself. So I'll run uh, an HTTP server, Python minus M HTTP dot server. Now I'll go to this link and here directory listing for all of these files, my complete folder. So go to apps and then open up your testing interface dot HTML. And here you can click on any random task. We can pick any random task from the JSON. So here you have task demonstration and that same interface that you looked at over here on the playground page, you can test it directly over here. So you can build your solution within this folder and then you know keep testing it. Challenge is being hosted on Kaggle. So complete overview of the challenge, the evaluation process, what the submission file and the format of the submission file, all of those details have been explained over here. For evaluation, the competition evaluates submissions on the percentage of correct predictions. And for each task, you have to predict exactly two outputs for every test input grid, which is contained in the task. Okay. And you have to keep in mind that there is 
this training and evaluation data set. And at the same time, there is a private held out data set as well, for which the team is going to assess your algorithm's capability and uh, performance. And combined together, the average is going to be your final score. Now, your ultimate goal over here should be to score 85% on this challenge in order to win the 500,000 US dollars, the big prize. Now, after learning all this, you must be wondering what should be my starting point, okay, and what should be the solution approach that I should explore first. So, in order to save you some time, they have also shared a bunch of approaches that have worked well and have led to the current state of the art. So first of all, they mentioned discrete program search, which has worked really well uh, for them. And this turned up in the Argathon, the a hackathon, which was, uh, you know, conducted by Lab42 back in 2020. This involved searching through a massive program space in a discrete step-by-step -step manner. Similarly, they have ensemble solutions, direct LLM prompting, domain-specific language program synthesis. And besides this, there has been another submission, Ryan Greenblatt. He has already scored 50% state of the art on Arc AGI with GPT-40. So let's look at what Ryan has done. First of all, you have to provide the problem details to the model that you're using, the LLM that you're using. And Ryan has used GPT-40 to solve this task. So present the Arc AGI problem with both image and detailed text representation of each grid. Then you have to guide GPT-40 to understand the necessary transformation. So you have to learn the transformations needed and then you have to code for it. So he's used detailed few short prompt with step-by-step -step reasoning examples to help GPT-40. Finally, once you have used different prompts with which is for you know different grid sizes and few short prompts that you have crafted, they both go into these ensemble prompt, combine the output from multiple pairs of few short prompts to enhance the accuracy. Then he samples once these code programs are generated, then he samples approximately 5000 completions per problem from GPT-40. So he generates many completions and he selects and fixes those completions. So you choose the top 12 completions and ask GPT-40 to revise them based on the actual outputs. And finally, once sample attempts to fix, then again, few short prompts for revision, include the text representation, and then you have the final submission selection, where you select the three final submissions based on a majority vote over the correct programs. And finally, there is a heuristics uh, if you need it. Okay, so he created it, but it's not actually required. So select the three submissions from here. All right, so all in all, a very complex and at the same time, very, very interesting problem to solve. Uh, and Francois believes that this can get us to AGI, which makes it all the more interesting and uh, hype worthy, I would say. And if you want to participate, you can participate alone uh, or with a team. Anybody can participate and submit their solution. And if you are interested, if this got you pumped, I would wish you nothing but the best. They have a Discord channel, so do join that. Try to learn from other participants. You can interact with them. And uh, yeah, uh, check out the Kaggle code notebooks, uh, the EDA that people have done on the data set. That would be really helpful. So for all those who are participating, all the very best. And uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one.